A narrow gauge track leads up to one of the quarries. The track is overgrown and everywhere are signs of decay and neglect. The empty sidings are a reminder that the slate is no longer carried by rail, so that the original reason for the construction of the railway no longer exists. The gaunt skeleton of a signal and a water tower stand on the site of one of the three stations built by the Ficiniog Railway in Vina Ficiniog. Further on, the track bed shows where the line Stenus went off, while the old engine shed stands roofless as the level crossing is no longer used. Traces of a line crossing the road recall that at one time ten quarries fed the line with slate and stone. Elsewhere, a railway bridge was demolished when the Stoolen Dam was built. Tanagrizia was at one time a most important place, but it has now seen a desolation. Beyond here, the track comes to an abrupt end as part of the original track bed of the line lies under the lower reservoir of the pumped hydroelectric scheme. Reopening the line began in 1955. On this map, the section which now has a regular service is shown in green. At the far end of the reservoir is Merwin Tunnel, now blocked, below which maintenance re and repair work is carried out and cuttings cleared so that trains can run and preparation be made for reopening this section of the line. Below Garner's tunnel, a familiar sound is heard. For a short distance away, there is a hive of activity at Tunnable Station. Here, at the present terminus of the line, Linda arrives bringing an up train. The Welsh station mistress, in national costume, hurries to unlock the door of the observation coach. One of the permanent way gangs is relaying a siding.
soon as it is obvious why the railway is so busy, although it no longer carries plates. The line is a world famous tourist attraction because of its historical interest and the beautiful scenery through which it passes. Coaches bring people from considerable distances to travel on the railway to and from Port Maddox. They are collected at the other end of the line. Tunnabork is a passing place in this single line railway and one of the busiest moments in the summer is in mid-afternoon when the down train awaits the up and both are in the station together. Blanche pulls in while Mervyn Emrys waits for her arrival. Linda takes her train down towards the coast, over the cast iron bridge, made in the company's own foundry over a hundred years ago. It passes banks of rhododendrons, one of the remarkable sights on the run. Light refreshments are provided for the passengers in one of the buffet cars, which are on all the trains, and the facilities offered are well patronized. Kaimara, a stone wall 60 foot high, is the largest of several embankments. More than 100 years ago, when the line was worked entirely by gravity, horses were used to haul the empty freight wagons over it back up to Blyna Pastinio. The most important intermediate station is Memphis. It has a subway to the main line station below. Here, Blanche passes Mervyn Emrys.
On busy days, a queue often forms outside the booking office at Fort Maddox. On the arrival of the train, the train staff is put into a staff machine, thus clearing the section for another train. Extra coaches are required and must be shunted on. Ministry of Transport regulations require all doors to be locked before the train pulls away. The train staff is obtained to allow the train to start on its journey. long embankment, known locally as the Cobb, is Boston Lodge Works. Here we find Prince, built in 1863. <laughs> engines are both maintained and housed in the works. Practically every kind of repair is undertaken, as well as construction of new coaches. Then 
Commander pulling our down train has just set down passengers at Mendel and is leaving the FR station above. Signals and Telegraph Department is continually improving the system and are here working outside Fort Murdoch Station. Linda steams across the cop and draws her train into Harbour Station. She carries Alan Pegler, chairman of the railway company, in the tender. These passengers have come to the end of their journey, covering just over half the length of the original line. The Pistiniog Railway Company and the Pistiniog Railway Society are looking to the future and seeking to reopen the line right through to its original terminus at Lahana Pistiniog. To do this, the railway will need even greater support from volunteers and members and all those who love Wales and her wonderful Maragage Railways. As Linda sets off towards Boston Lodge to go on shed, let us hope that it will not be too long before she is able to haul her train right through to the end of the line. <laughs> 